Hello friends. Welcome back to Stories with Sunny. Let's see, we'll pull our sign down since we know where we are now. Oh, it's good to see everybody. I see Mike's on. Good morning, Mike. Oh my goodness. We are going to talk about the 4th of July a little bit today and read some patriotic books so that we can celebrate all next week before the 4th actually happens next Saturday. We've got some really fun stuff in our grab and go bags at all three libraries that I'll walk you guys through as well. So what do you say? You wanna get started and read a few books? Let's start with this one. It's called How to Make a Cherry Pie and See the USA. Do you guys like pie? If you do, I'd love if you would leave a comment and tell me what your favorite kind of pie is. I'm not a pie fan. I like cake and cookies better. So I would love to hear what kind you guys like. If anybody likes cherry pie the best of all, that's my dad's favorite pie is cherry pie. So How to Make a Cherry Pie and See the USA by Marjorie Priceman. Right. This book's really neat because as you can see right here, there's an actual recipe for cherry pie. So if you want when it comes to this one, you can check this book out after I get done reading it today here at the Rock Springs Library. In the mood for a cherry pie? Let's get started. First, mix flour and salt in a bowl. What? No, no bowl? You will definitely need a bowl. Also, a pie pan, a rolling pin, a measuring cup, a pastry slab, a set of spoons, and some pot holders, which you can get at the cook shop. So here's our cook shop. But if the cook shop happens to be closed, can you see the sign? It says closed for the 4th of July. So he's hanging a flag. This guy's hanging some bunting up on the windows. Hmm. So if it happens to be closed, go to New York and hail a taxi. Ask the driver to drop you off at the corner of Pennsylvania and Ohio. Then find the closest coal mine. Coal is used to make steel, and you'll need steel to make your pie pan. Take the trolley deep underground and fill a bucket to the brim. Don't forget your hard hat and your flashlight. Next, ride a riverboat down the Mississippi. It takes as long to sail it as it does to say it. That was fun. Now back to work. Your task is to find some clay. A good place is to look down. You're probably standing on it. Dig up enough clay to make a mixing bowl, but watch out for cactus needles. Board a train to Washington, the only state that's named for a president, and rumored to have a set of wooden teeth. Speaking of wood, go to the forest and find a nice branch. Saw off a piece the size of a rolling pin and make your way to New Hampshire. New Hampshire can usually be found between Maine and Vermont. Granite can usually be found on the side of a steep mountain. Repel down the side of a mountain and chisel a chunk of granite from your pastry slab. Next stop, Texas. To get to Texas, follow the coastline south. When you get to Florida, turn right. Then go straight until you run into a longhorn steer. Ask the steer directions to an oil field. Plastic is made from oil, and you'll need about a quart to make your spoons. Tip your hat to the oil workers, then head to the airport. Board a plane flying north. When you're over South Dakota, don't forget to wave to the presidents. Then chill out in Alaska, just because it's there. After you've seen the scenery, hurry on home. Now all you have left to do is process the coal, mix the iron, and roll it into flat sheets. Form the sheets into a pie pan. Spin cotton into thread, weave a thread into a cloth, Cut and stitch the cloth into pot holders. Carve the wood into a rolling pin, then sand and seal. Shape the clay into a bowl, paint with glaze, and then fire. Process the oil and pour it into spoon-shaped molds. Cut the granite into a square pastry slab, then smooth and polish it. Melt the sand you find until it liquefies, then pour into a measuring cup mold. Next. Using your bowl, spoons, rolling pin, measuring cup, pie pan, pastry slab, and pot holders, mix all of your ingredients and bake a pie. When the pie is cooled, cut into slices with a pie server. If you don't have a pie server, you can get one at the cook shop. But if the cook shop is still closed, why not just join in the parade? Hmm? 
Have any of you ever been to a 4th of July parade? I try and go to one every year down in New Mexico. It's a lot of fun. I know. Do you like the parade better if you get to see one or do you like the fireworks better? I think I like parades a little bit more than fireworks, but both are a lot of fun. Let's see. I don't know where I want to go. How about this one? Lady Liberty's Holiday. Can you see the Statue of Liberty right there? Sometimes we call her Lady Liberty. That's one of the names that she has. This one's kind of fun too. Lady Liberty's Holiday by Jen Arena. Do you see Lady Liberty over here? She's on an island. Do you guys know where that little island is? What state that that's off of? It's in New York, right outside of New York City. She stands there all the time. Where does she? Here she is. Not long before the 4th of July, Lady Liberty woke up feeling a little blue, despite being green. Year after year, she stood by New York Harbor, a torch in one hand, a tablet in another. Mo, every day feels the same, Liberty said. I see the same skyscrapers, the same city. My neck is stiff. My arms are aching. I've had a cramp in my leg for at least a decade. Here's Mo. Mo puffed out his pigeon chest. Lady, you need to get away, he told her. Go and see the country, shake the rust off, and I don't have any rust, Lady Liberty protested. Mo went on, get yourself a holiday. Mo's words echoed in Liberty's head. She had only seen one little corner of America. What was the rest of it like? That night, she lowered her torch she put down her tablet. She pried her sandals from the stone and then the Statue of Liberty snuck away. First, she left footprints on the Jersey shore and built the biggest sandcastle Cape Cod had ever seen. She washed off the sand at Niagara Falls. You guys see Mo down here? He's getting a postcard from Lady Liberty on her travels. When you travel, do you send postcards to people? I like to do that, I think it's kind of fun. Then Lady Liberty headed west. She watched the Mississippi River from the very top of the St. Louis Arch. And in the Kansas, wheat fields tickled her feet. Is she making a wheat angel in the, the wheat fields? She even did a little bit of sightseeing in South Dakota. That's the second time we've seen that. Does anyone know what that's called? That's Mount Rushmore. It has four of the president's faces carved into the side of a mountain. She hiked across the Rocky Mountains in sandals. Afterwards, the California sunshine made her so sleepy, she napped against the Golden Gate Bridge. Back in New York, Mo was starting to worry. The 4th of July was three days away but without Lady Liberty, people weren't in a holiday mood. The tourists were gloomy, the cops were cross, even the stock market was down. The mayor was talking about canceling the 4th of July. What if Liberty doesn't come back in time, Mo said. What if she's gone for good? He had to find her. It was true. Liberty wasn't thinking of returning. At the Grand Canyon, for once in her life, Liberty felt small. She trekked through the hot, dry desert and slurped water from a Yellowstone geyser. It tasted awful. Deep in the heart of Texas, she napped under the big, bright stars with cattle all around. She danced to music near New Orleans used the Florida Keys as stepping stones, and waded through the southern swamps. Lady Liberty was shaking an alligator off of her big toe when she heard the familiar flap of penguin wings. It was Mo. He perched on her shoulder. Lady, I've been looking all over for you, he said. You have? Liberty asked. How are things in New York? Not so good, said Mo. They're canceling the 4th of July. 
Liberty bolted up as if she'd been struck by lightning. Canceling the 4th of July, they can't. Mo nodded. Nobody feels like celebrating without you. But the 4th of July isn't about me. It's about America. I've seen this country, the purple mountains, the shining seas, the bridges and buildings. Everyone should know how amazing it is and celebrate it. Mo fluffed out his feathers. Come back to New York, he said. The mayor might change his mind. He didn't get to finish his sentence. Liberty was already running north. At dawn, the sun shone on the copper dress of Lady Liberty in New York Harbor, where she had stood for over a hundred years. That night, fireworks lit the sky. People waved flags, sang songs, and shouted, Happy Fourth of July. And Liberty was blue no longer. It was good to get away, she told Mo, but it's great to be home. Have any of you ever been to New York City to see Lady Liberty? It's a pretty impressive sight. She is really, really tall. Okay, do we have one more book in this, guys? I think we probably do. This one's called, What Does It Mean to Be an American? So we're talking about the 4th of July that's coming up, which is what? The United States of America's birthday, right? And so we read a book about our country, read two books about our country and what it looks like in different places and what different areas of our, our country do. If you can get steel from some and sand from others and clay from others. Let's talk for a minute about what it means to be an American because that's what we are, right? We live in the United States of America, which makes us Americans, which is why we celebrate the 4th of July. What does it mean to be American by Rana Diorio? What does it mean to be American? Does it mean liking apple pie and fireworks? No. Does it mean living in the United States? Not exactly. Does it mean loving fast food? No. Being American means believing that all people are created equal and should have an opportunity to be happy. Being American means following your dreams and working very hard to achieve them. It means having the freedom to choose whom we love, what we believe, what we do, and where we live, and the freedom to change our minds if we want to. Being American means that knowing all Americans follow the same rules. It means honoring those who protect and serve us. You guys see? It means cherishing our abundant natural resources and enjoying the time we spend outdoors. Being American means being grateful all year for our many blessings and leading by example to take action when people need help. It means welcoming people from other countries and helping them learn what it means to be American. Being American means appreciating our differences make us kinder, smarter, healthier, and stronger. Being American means using our imagination and creativity to invent new things and using our curiosity and courage to explore new frontiers. It means being proud of all we have accomplished and humble about what we still need to learn. Being American means having the right to become your best self and the obligation to help others do the same. So fill your heart with love for who we are and your mind with ideas of how you, your family, and your friends can make the greatest nation in the world even better. Being an American is a pretty important job. And I like the way that that book kind of breaks it down for us and tells us that. I think we sometimes forget that we are a very, very lucky country but we have an obligation sometimes to make sure that we're acting the right way and encouraging others to do the same, to continue to be great and amazing. 
Okay, so those are our books for today. I have to show you the grab and go kit from Rock Springs. You're gonna get your puppet, which is a bald eagle this time. Make him talk and tell stories. You'll be able to make a pinwheel and a little fireworks ring that you can wear on the 4th of July. And in each bag, we also have just some random crafts that we had, like little campfire kits or star wreaths or bottles, bubbles, and things like that. So make sure you head down and check ours out. Here is a picture of the kit that you can get at the White Mountain Library over with Miss Sherry. And it looks like you can make a wreath and a little s'more, a patriotic s'mores craft. And there's a whole sheet of star stickers in there for you so you can decorate some things. And over in Green River with Miss Becky, we have a super cool bubble art craft. And there are, oh, you can't see them. I'm gonna try to turn a little bit. There are some bubbles in here that they have put different coloring in so that when you blow the bubbles and it hits the paper and they pop, it'll make art in all sorts of different colors. There's a mobile in there that you can make and all sorts of super fun stuff. So make sure you check hers out for sure. Okay, guys. Same story as always, tune in today at two and every weekday at two to see Mr. Aaron read some really cool books. Next week, we have toddler time and story time with Miss Becky. Miss Constance will be here. She's going to walk you guys through how to make nature fireworks at Create with Constance next week. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm really excited for that one. And we are closed next Friday, but I'm gonna go ahead and pre-record a story time for you guys um, so that you can watch it next Friday, even though we're not open and you can't come in and get books. So I hope you guys are all doing well. We miss you. Remember, you can come back into the library whenever you want to now. So we hope that we'll see you soon. And if nothing else, I'll see you next Friday for more Stories with Sunny. Bye.